When I was finally aware that I was not just a witness, I sat and thought about the fact that I'm considered a victim. My questions were how and why. By the context in which I am considered a victim, which is having to witness this domestic terrorist terrorize two young women who happen to be black passing, subject them and all other passengers to this form of white terrorism, or his form of white terrorism, and ultimately take two lives that he never had a hand in creating, while almost taking a third, and being in his path as he fled the scene. Under those contexts, every victim or every human in that car was a victim, except of course him. Every person who this terror was aimed at, black passing people and any white passing people who sided with them, who saw this video on social media on, or the internet was a victim. Because the messaging is and has been clear for centuries it is simply adapted to human and technological evolution. But I ultimately understood and agreed. I struggled a bit with sleeping prior to this, but not to the extent that my sleep patterns have been disrupted since these senseless acts of terrorism and murder. More than three years ago, I fall asleep later in the evening or morning, uh, hope that I get enough sleep uh, to function and get up for work or to take a class or whatever I have to do that day. My lack of sleep has affected my ability to bring my best self and do my best in all phases of my life. My ability to recover and restore has been significantly inhibited, especially in the last three years. I liken it to the insomnia and other trauma-informed issues that pervaded after my most violent and long combat tours, returning home and not getting the healing and coping mechanisms to begin the efforts to attempt some form of mental, emotional, physical, physiological, and spiritual homeostasis and health. Also, since the event, I've, I've, uh, I've resumed both my hypervigilance, which probably is why I've been battling insomnia, uh, and my anti-terrorism personal protection practices. As I shared with one of the prosecutors, I felt more comfortable in combat than I do simply living and maneuvering in peacetime through society in this country. With everything that was going on in combat, <clears throat> I knew that whoever was with me or behind me was only focused on everyone getting out alive, regardless of color, gender, etc. Because we had a higher priority at hand. We recognized our similarities and differences as strengths, as the strengths they were. And the other biases essentially had to take a back seat, albeit temporarily. In this country, we are going through a health crisis, a pandemic, and the terrorism continues. Unveiling yet another centuries old pandemic of anti-blackness, racism, white terrorism, that has never waned or been healed. It simply was morphed into a different looking plague. You would think the coronavirus would bring out the humanity in all of us, force us to courageously push beyond our biases. But alas, it has simply brought to the surface the racism, anti-blackness, certain people have chosen to mix with their spiritual foundational soil and plant seeds of lies, fear, and terror to proudly sprout the trees of the Crusades, colonialism, manifest destiny, genocide, slavery, Jim Crow laws, black codes, convict leasing, and eugenics, just to name a few. I was also impacted because the visual of every second of this event is etched in my memory. 
I definitely tried to submerge it in the last three years, even forget it, but I was unsuccessful. I question what I could have done differently most days, if not every day. I've internalized this event, picking it apart frame by frame. Even beat myself up. Because in my head, people died on my watch. There is no doubt that many, if not all, of the survivors and victims of this are doing similar things while coping with multiple elements of survivor's guilt. Unfortunately, for black passion people, most of us move with survivor's guilt from multiple family members and friends murdered in our neighborhoods and are traumatized daily by anti-blackness to the point that we probably think or believe we deserve it. But this expectation is not of the healthy variety. It is the layered additional stress that only we deal with, which is eroding us from within and killing us significantly earlier than any other demographic. I pray that if there is a lesson to be had in this terrorist tragedy, that this is among many awakenings to us all, that we are all responsible to seek truth, to speak truth, and behave truth, to seek health, to speak health, and behave health, to seek love, to speak love, and behave love. Then and only then can we learn enough about ourselves and others to appreciate love, respect, value, and honor ourselves and others in all of our similarities and our uniqueness and that of others. Again, it is precisely our differences that afford us the opportunity to be a great society, nation, and planet. We make daily choices to dismiss and ignore those opportunities with the consistencies of our thoughts, our words, and our actions. So please don't tell me anymore. Spare me the rhetoric. Show me consistently. Thank you to everyone who was instrumental in seeking and securing justice in this case and sending that response out to the world, hopefully. Um, and my recommendation for the sentence is the maximum on every charge, whatever that may be. That's it. Thank you.